Hello, my name is Travis Monk. This is one of a series of videos involving genetics. This video will focus on three topics, replication, transcription, and translation. These three processes, illustrated in the picture on this slide, allow DNA to copy itself, to produce RNA, and then to produce proteins that carry out virtually every important job for the cell. The specifics of these three processes will be described in detail throughout this video. Replication is the process by which DNA replicates or produces an identical copy of itself. As the picture to the right shows, DNA is unraveled into two different strands. Each of these resulting strands acts like a template, where new nucleotides are added to form a complete DNA strand. These nucleotides are made up of the sugar deoxyribose, a phosphate group, and one of four nitrogen-containing bases, guanine, cytosine, adenine, or thymine. When I said that each of the half strands of DNA acts like a template, what I mean is that the new strands are completed very carefully using complementary base pairing. For every guanine, or G, that is unpaired, a cytosine, or C, is found to match. This complementary base pairing makes it relatively easy and accurate for the cell to copy its DNA, to begin with one strand and to end up with two. DNA replication occurs in the nucleus, as that is the location within eukaryotic cells where DNA is always found. The process of DNA replication involves many proteins and is actually quite complex. There is a separate video that will discuss the specifics of this process, which is entitled DNA Replication. Transcription is the process by which DNA is encoded into messenger RNA, or mRNA. Since DNA and RNA have a lot in common, the process of replication and transcription have lots of similarities. Just as new nucleotides are added to the DNA strand during replication, this occurs in transcription, with a few exceptions. First, these nucleotides contain the sugar ribose instead of deoxyribose. Second, the nucleotides that match never contain T or thymine, but instead possess U for uracil. Finally, instead of both halves of the DNA strand being used as a template, only one side is during transcription. Since DNA is involved in this process, and DNA is always located in the nucleus for eukaryotes, this process also occurs in the nucleus. Just like the process of replication, transcription is very complex, consisting of many steps and many different enzymes. This process will also be elaborated on in a separate video entitled Transcription. The last process involved in the production of proteins from DNA is called translation. In this particular activity, RNA is used to produce proteins. There are a few noteworthy steps in this process. First, messenger RNA, or mRNA, moves from the nucleus where it's produced to the cytoplasm. Second, a ribosome attaches to the messenger RNA strand and reads the code, three letters at a time. Each of these three-letter sequences of a messenger RNA code is referred to as a codon, as it codes for a particular amino acid that's going to be made. This process is depicted into the image to the right. The ribosome is shown in yellow, while the multicolored string of spheres represent the messenger RNA strand. When the ribosome reads each three-letter sequence of mRNA, each codon, a tRNA molecule that contains a complementary sequence attaches to it. tRNA molecules are shown as green hairpin-shaped structures in the image on the right hand of this slide. The three-letter sequence of tRNA is referred to as an anticodon. Each anticodon carries with it an amino acid, shown as brightly colored ovals in this image. As the process of translation occurs, these amino acids are linked together to form a protein. Translation always begins and ends at specific points of an mRNA sequence that are referred to as start and stop codons. Each of the cells in your body contains billions of letters worth of nucleic acids, and codes for 20,000 or more proteins. Starting and ending translation at the correct location is very important. All human proteins begin with the same start codon, AUG, which produces the amino acid methionine. There are three different stop codons that end translation. These sequences are UAA, UAG, and UGA. The chart on this slide shows the start and stop codons, as well as the all of the other three-letter combinations of four different mRNA bases. A separate video entitled Replication, Transcription, and Translation Practice Problems will explain how to perform complementary base pairing in DNA, complementary base pairing in RNA, and how to determine what amino acids are being produced in these processes using a chart similar to the one that's shown on this slide. 
The image on this slide sums up the processes that have been described so far, as well as where they occur. DNA replication, not shown here, occurs in the nucleus. In this process, one strand of DNA makes two. In transcription, one half of the DNA molecule is read to produce messenger RNA. The mRNA leaves the nucleus and moves to the cytoplasm. Translation is the process by which mRNA is read by a ribosome. tRNA attaches to the complex, and the amino acids that they carry are bonded together to form a protein. The image on this slide provides an analogy for the different processes this video has attempted to explain. In replication, one strand of DNA is used to make two. If you were to photocopy the book shown in the upper left-hand corner of this slide, page for page to produce another book, you would perform replication. If you were to copy a page of this book by hand, that would be comparable to performing transcription, producing RNA from DNA. If you were to change the language of that page, from Spanish to English, for example, that would be comparable to performing the process of translation. Nucleic acids, DNA and RNA, are in a completely different cell language than proteins. That is the end of this video summarizing replication, transcription, and translation. If you're interested in learning about any other concepts involving genetics or any other themes of biology, please subscribe to my channel. Thank you.